Today we're headed to Visalia, California. From their website, Visalia is nestled in the foothills below the majestic Sierra Nevada and is the gateway to both Sequoia and Kings National Parks and is home to California's most brutal police canine handlers. Wait, what? That can't be right. Hey everybody, welcome to the channel. It's Rob, and I'm one of the Freeman people. It's the Freeman people. Well, this story was sent to us a few days ago by YouTuber AllThingsCali626. Their channel link is in the description below. According to a lawsuit resulting from this incident, which is currently in the District Court of Eastern California, on October 20th, 2020, Miss Keys, mother of Mr. Gutierrez, a 21-year-old man who suffers from paranoid schizophrenia, called for emergency assistance to take her son to the hospital for immediate mental health treatment. Dispatch summoned six police officers to the scene, including Officer Sean Schiebelhut and his canine partner. Tasing him is not going to help. He to. needs medical attention. Okay, this is for my protection, though. He threw trash cans at me. Okay. This is for my protection. This is for self-defense. If he comes at me, I will. But I'm not advancing on him, okay? He is a schizophrenic. I got it. I'm trying to talk okay, him down. Okay, well, put your gun down. So no. Look, or your taser. If you don't back up, I'm going to arrest you. Back up. Back up. Go all the way back to that white car. Back up. Get back to that car. Oh, no, I'm the one that called you guys. I've dealt with back. you before. Just, please get back, please. I know, we don't want to tase him right there, okay? They better not tase him. No, they won't, they won't. They just need to... He just needs to put his phone down and at least just... Is his phone even... I don't even think his phone... I don't, I don't even think his phone... Oh, down. that is not necessary. I don't even think his phone... Down. If he's schizophrenic, I might send the same one. Jordan, put the phone down. If anything, they're just gonna take them and just, you know, make sure everything's fine. Take your phone out. Take your phone out. Jordan, put your phone down, son. Hey! 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 Leave him! Stop! I know! Less than 30 seconds from the time he arrived, Shebelhut determined that this man was such a danger to him and the officers around him that it was necessary to sick his dog on the victim. Evidently, police in Visalia are so scared of cell phones they're willing to send dogs after citizens who are holding them. He's a schizophrenic! Oh my god! Just, no. Did we not? Hey. You guys just broke. No. No. This is not what I asked you know, for. Becca, I'm going to arrest you. I've told you numerous times. You. you, that's my son, man. I told you he needed medical attention. He needed medical attention, not this. Now he really needs medical attention. I'm sorry, mijo. I'm sorry. I'm thirsty. I'm just thirsty. I never ate. No baby water. I never ate. I never had to die. You could have placed him. Why didn't you place him? Don't tell me how to do my job. A lawsuit for this attack has been in the works since 2021, and it's now in the Eastern California District Court. We'll look at that in a minute, but first let's see how the responding officers describe this event in their report. From the Visalia Times Delta, police officer's account of the incident obtained by the Times Delta paint a dangerous picture for police. Officer Sean Schiebelhut and his police dog arrived after two officers were already on scene. Schiebelhut says that trash cans had been thrown at officers as they approached Gutierrez, who clinched his fist and took a bladed stance. They were continuing to struggle with the suspect, Schiebelhut said in his report. Because Gutierrez wouldn't take his hand out of his pocket, officers say they didn't know if the man was armed with a weapon. The man's mother claims she told the police he wasn't armed. I advised both officers that if the suspect decides to start fighting, to back away and I would deploy my canine partner, Schiebelhut said in his report. 
I saw Gutierrez begin to walk away, saying something to the effect of, nah, fool, when Officer Viteto was requesting for him to remove his hands from his pockets. Lieutenant Ron Epp said in his account that the man turned away from the police, making it difficult to determine if he had any weapons in that pocket. Shebelhut says he released his police dog after seeing Epp and Viteto struggle to control Gutierrez. The dog first bit the man's left hip. Shebelhut says the man continued to resist, and because the dog didn't have a good grip, he let go and bit the man's face. The dog let go before the man was cuffed, Shebelhut said. The suspect immediately complied and the other two officers were able to take him into custody. Viteto drove Gutierrez to Kuwea Delta Medical Center and both officers escorted the man in for treatment. Now, I wonder if Vesalia officers are trained to drive their spouses to the hospital after beating them too, but this is interesting that they at least drove the victim to the hospital. Keys, 42, was also detained on suspicion of obstructing and distracting officers during the arrest, quote, compromising officer safety. She was later charged with obstructing an officer. So not only did they sick their dog on this defenseless disabled man, they also detained and charged his mother for objecting to the dog biting her son. The Visalia Police Department is also facing another lawsuit filed in March over a canine mauling of a mentally disabled man. The officers involved in that case are not the same as those involved in Gutierrez's case. When asked about this response, Chief Jason Salazar responded, We take our mental health calls very seriously. Our officers are trained above and beyond most other departments in crisis intervention. We've been awarded for our training, and I'm proud to say most of our officers officers and dispatchers have all been trained. If Visalia police officers are trained above and beyond most other departments in crisis intervention, I would hate to see how other departments respond. Oh, and Gutierrez was charged on October 20th with felony evading a police officer. So objecting to a dog biting you multiple times is considered evading a police officer. The lawsuit paints a different picture. While Miss Keys watched, Officer 1 and Officer 2 started yelling at Mr. Gutierrez. Officer 1 and Officer 2 positioned themselves so that one officer was on either side of Mr. Gutierrez and continued to yell at him. Mr. Gutierrez did not move, but instead kept the cell phone pressed to his ear. Officer 1 and Officer 2 then grabbed him by the arms and forced them behind his back. Once he was defenseless with his arms behind his back, Officer 3 ordered the canine to attack Mr. Gutierrez. Officer 3 held the leash for the canine dog, watching, along with the other three defendants, as the canine dog repeatedly bit into Mr. Gutierrez's flesh. First, the canine bit Mr. Gutierrez's hip. He screamed and lurched to the side in pain. After the first bite, the defendants did not call off the dog, intervene, or take any action to shield Mr. Gutierrez from further injury. Instead, Officer 4 continued to watch as Officers 1 and 2 continued to hold Mr. Gutierrez's arms back. Officer 3 then allowed the dog to jump on Mr. Gutierrez again. This time, the dog tore into Mr. Gutierrez's face. As defendants put Mr. Gutierrez into the back of the police car, one of the officers stated if he wants to fight with police, he's going to get dog bit. Defendants did not summon an ambulance or provide first aid to the confused and bleeding Mr. Gutierrez. Instead, they left him afraid, alone, mentally ill, his face bleeding and riddled with dog bites in the back of the police car for approximately half an hour. After 30 minutes had passed, the defendants transported Mr. Gutierrez to a hospital to be treated for a dog bite. Once at the hospital, neither defendants nor anyone with the Visalia Police Department alerted hospital staff to Mr. Gutierrez's need for mental health treatment. The Visalia Police Department then transported Mr. Gutierrez from the hospital to a jail facility without his clothes. For a Approximately two days, the Visalia Police Department left the wounded, traumatized, and mentally ill Mr. Gutierrez in a jail facility with nothing to wear except a medical gown, underwear, and shoes. During the time Mr. Gutierrez was in jail, the Visalia Police Department did not provide Mr. Gutierrez with any medication or treatment for his mental illness. The moral of the story is this. If anyone you know suffers from a mental illness, the last people you should call in an emergency are police officers. They simply aren't trained to properly handle these situations situations, and more often than not, they exacerbate them, and people get completely avoidable charges brought against them. This was a horrible way to learn that lesson, so please take it to heart so nobody you love has to learn the same way. Share this video with their caretakers if they have any doubt. The contact info for this department is down below. If you'd like to let them know that they aren't treating their dogs humanely, or if you want to commend them on being mostly trained on how to deal with mental health emergencies, their contact info is in the comments and description below. Thanks for taking action against tyranny. Here's a couple of videos you may have missed, and while you're at it, check out the Freeman People merch.